you can have a seat. So, we start as always with our kids' time, our interactive time. We've been going through the book of Colossians. Colossians is right up there. Who did that? That's dirty. Book of Colossians. How many chapters have we gone through? Uh, three. Three. No, three. 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 We started the fourth one. There's been a lot of stuff we've gone through, right? A lot of stuff. So I'm going to put it up there, and then you guys tell me about what it means. All right? Um, so what? First, the whole book is about what? Being rooted in Christ. Being rooted in Christ. That's right. Just like this tree up there, the roots, the roots go deep, and we want deep roots in Christ. Um, so that when we got tough times, we got deep roots, so our, our, we don't get blown over, right? All right. Supremacy of Christ. What does that mean? Uh, God is supreme. He's better. Jesus is supreme. That's right. He's over all things. Why, why is this helpful? Uh, Whenever you uh, win something bad's happening in your life, you know that God is still there and he's better. Good, good. What about when something good's happening? Uh, God's God's better than you. Good. Yeah, he's making it happen. He's even better than that. Good. All right. Good, 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 good. All right. What about the sufficiency of he's Christ? Good God is all we need. That's right. Yeah. Jesus is good enough. He's all we need. If we don't ever get another good thing, God is all we need. Jesus is all we need. That's right. Good. He's sufficient. What about the uniqueness of Christ? Nobody's like us. He's different. Nobody, Nobody nothing is different. like Jesus, right? Why is this helpful? Uh, when, you, you know when it's God. It's there's only, only one God. God. So there's yeah. only one God. That's so good. Idolism. Yeah. So what about idolism. all the things you can experience in life? Some things you're going to love. Some things you're going to hate. None of them will be like Jesus, right? He's unique, and that will root you in Christ. Um, Tied any. Thing you do to his uniqueness. That's how we'll stay rooted. Alright? What about theology of suffering? What was this about? Uh, God God is good. Or, or, or sanctification. No. 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 Uh, suffering. Uh, suffering. Uh, Bad things happen, right? Yeah. And what do we need to remember? Two things. Christians need to help out. And God is good. God is good no matter what happens, right? God is good. And we also need to remember that God's people are to step up when suffering happens to other people. All right, then we talked about Christ at work in us. What does this look like when Christ is working in us? Uh, us doing things for God. To does it look like Does it look like backflips? No. No? It's one step at a time. That's right. It's just taking the next step. So what are these simple little steps we need to take? They're not backflips, all right? There's seven things. Pray. Pray. Go to church. Go to church on Sunday. Worship on Sunday. Hang on. One thing at a time. Pray. Worship on Sunday. Read your Bible. Good. Invite your friends to church. Invite your church. Good. Uh, make disciples. Mm -hmm. Or is that part of Best part of oh, this. Yeah. Be a part of a small circle. Good. Share your faith. Confess your sins. Right? All right. So now we got it. Um, next, we talked about Christian dominion. These are some big words all the way through. What does this mean? God, uh, we need to spread the word to every nation. That's right. Uh, God rules over all. That's right. What is Jesus doing right now? Putting his hands under his feet. Putting his hands under his feet. How is he doing that? His people sharing his gospel. His people sharing his gospel. Good job, good job. All right. Then, I know this is a long review, but it's almost our last one. Jamie, you'll have the last one next week. We talk about lordship salvation. What does this mean? God saves. It's, there's, yeah, we're talking about sanctification. It looks like these different things. When, uh, oh, when we, when we come to Jesus, we are saved in a snap. Right? Mm -hmm. That is justification. Boom. We're no longer like we were. He has made us new. Um, when we die, it happens in a snap, and all of a sudden, boom, we are with Jesus. Right? Sanctification happens right here on earth. And it means Jesus is Lord over our life. He is our boss. And we're going to live this life trying to live and do the things he says to do. And not do the things he says not to do. Right? All right. Last week was Christian liberty. What is that? Uh, 
Uh, two weeks ago, sorry. We can we are free to do what is in the rules. Uh, we're we have freedom inside the set of rules. Good, good, good. Um, yeah. Um, so again, we have freedom. It's not do whatever you want, but it's also not follow everyone else's rules. It's freedom through discipline. Um, and in Christian Liberty, we talked about asking some questions. Um, so you guys help me remember what these questions are good for. All right? So, oh, they're all up there. I thought it was supposed to go one at a time. Let's try it this way. Yeah, that's better. All right, so how do I know if I should or shouldn't do something? What do I need to do? Uh, check the Bible. Good, good. Uh, uh, is it said? That's right. Is the Bible is the Word of God, so we're going to go to the Bible. Next question we need to ask is, is it sin? Why should we care if something is sin or not? Because that's against God's word. Good, 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 good. Um, sin is what put Jesus on the cross, right? Yep. And so we don't want to do things that would do that. All right. Am I a slave to this? What is this talking about? Do you idolize it? Idolize it? That's one way. Do you um, have to do love it? Love it more than God. Love it more than Jesus? Good, good, good. Um, it's, it's, it's leaning towards the addiction word, right? Um, and so... If I'm not a slave, how easily could people become enslaved to this, right? Um, and so I don't need to try meth, right? Because I know people get addicted to that really, really easy. Um, but it's not just awful things like drugs, is it? Um, I, I know people who are addicted to sweets, um, who are eating too much. I, I know people who have all kinds of addictions, and this is supposed to save us from those from becoming a slave to those things, all right? Um, then we ask the question, if Jesus walked in on you, how would you feel? Why is this important question, question important? Because it helps you know if yeah. you would do it in, like, if it's good or not. Yeah, it engages the emotions, right? And it's like, all right, so how would I feel if Jesus saw me? Would I be embarrassed? Would I think I don't need to do this? Um, so we're gonna engage those emotions also in our decision making. Finally. Does scripture mention a better way? What does this what what does this question mean? Does the Bible say that there's a better way to do whatever you do? Yeah, so maybe it's not sin exactly, but the Bible tells us an order and a way to do these things, and we want to stick to that. Alright, so today we're gonna to be talking about good review, long review. I don't know that you need to do all that review next week, but you're called buddy. <laughs> uh, today we'll be talking about I'll bring a test. There you go. <laughs> The gospel threads. So this, we're going to also start with a question that says, if you had to share the gospel with some, with somebody, what would you say? Mm. This is what would you say? Hang on, hang on. Melinda, if you had to share the gospel with someone, what would you say? You don't know? Well, this is a good one to pay attention to, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll get you there. Don't worry. Uh, all right, Grayson, if you had to share the gospel, what would you say? Um, this is the gospel, but I read this verse often. You, you don't have nothing to read. You don't have nothing to read. So what would you say? Listen, this was your friend, oh, don't and they don't know Jesus. And what do you need to tell them so they can they can turn from their sin and turn to Jesus? So the gospel. Yeah. It's, so Jesus died on the cross because... People sin, and then since people sin, they, they sin is what put Jesus on the cross, and then in the Bible it tells you what what it tells you what things are sin and not, and you can just read the Bible and know basically the gospel. Okay, all right, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Good, good, good. Someone else want to give it a try? Go ahead, Josh. Hey, bud, did you know you're gonna? <laughs> he started with bud. But so it, it softened it, made it yeah. nice, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Which has eternal suffering. Oh, you don't know me? What do you mean I'm going to hell? Go ahead. Uh, but there is a better way. Okay. So there's this cool epic guy named Jesus, and he's God's son. It's the hippie thing to do. <laughs> Let him talk. Uh, and so he basically died for you so that you didn't have to go to hell of eternal suffering and pain. So, uh,. All you got to do is believe in him, and through him, you can go to heaven. Okay, all right. Not bad. All right, y'all remember those. All right, I want to...
gonna come back to him at the end, bud. All right? <laughs> Not bad. Hey, listen. But at the end, we're gonna go through the gospel, and you can kind of grade yourself and be like, okay, um, I got this part, but I need to add this part, or too much of this, or whatever it is. All right? Um, so, real life story. All right? This really happened. I had a best friend for several years. Um, we worked together. Uh, we went to college together. We were roommates together. Um, we would get into our, our house that we all lived in, that we'd get into arguments. Um, and my buddy, he always, always sided with what I said. Always. He was like, no, no, Mike's, Mike's actually right on this. Um, and so if, if I was talking to a Catholic friend, um, he would say, yeah, I get what you're doing, but, but Mike's right. I, I, I don't even know why, but Mike is right. So, of course he's my best friend saying I'm right all the time, right? Yeah. Um, but, best friend would be like... But I'm listen, really... listen. He, he agreed with, with the gospel things I had to say. But, truth be told, he didn't live like the gospel actually affected his life. Um, there were words he said that he shouldn't have. There were things he was doing that he shouldn't have. He was living for his own happiness. Um, and, and so... So I knew I needed to share the gospel with my friend. I didn't know how I was going to do it. So I actually spent several years, not years, several months and a long time praying for opportunities to share the gospel with my buddy. Um, so finally, one night, I was sitting in my truck and I pulled the trigger to have this gospel conversation. If you were me, what would you need to say to make sure you share the actual gospel? Okay, so. Okay. Let me tell you guys. Here's a good place. Let me tell you okay. how to start it, and then we'll talk through each part, okay? okay? First thing we want to talk through is we want to let people know that God is good. In fact, the adults can help me with this part. If I say God is good, you say. All the time. All the time. All the time. And then I say all the time, and you say. God is God good. good. Y'all can, can catch that. Y'all got to play along. God is good? All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. So we know that God is good, so it's a good place to start um, with the character of God, right? Yep. Um, and so, so we start to with the character of God. He is the creator. He created all things. People need to know that who God is and who the Bible says he is. Um, he is not made in our image. We, as people, are made in his image. Um, and there's a lot of mistaken concepts of God. A lot of people, a lot of your friends out there, will think of God as a grandfather God who comes and gives gifts, right? He just shows up every now and then to make sure you're happy um, or you have special treats or like the grandma God kind of a thing. Or um, the God who lives to make them healthy, happy, and whole. When, it's, when attempting to share the gospel, we need to start with the bad news that God is good and perfect. Why is this bad news? Because it means we are not. Because, you are not. because we are not. Why is this bad news for my buddy that was trying to share the gospel? Because of the next thing. Man is sinful. Man is not good. We even have a saying, nobody's perfect, right? Or po-body's perfect, right, Ben? From the office, do you remember? Oh, man, po-body's perfect? They even got that saying wrong. Anyways. Pam said it to Dwight. Po-body's perfect. Anyways. Um, so we have a saying, man is sinful. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Man is simple. We are not perfect. What has God given us so that we can understand the sinfulness the of man? The Bible. That's right. Two things we have, and they work great together. Um, we have God's word, the law, and we have man's conscience. They work together. I hate it when they work together on me. When I've actually done something wrong, um, and I read it in scripture, and then I'm convicted, I don't like that, right? Um, yeah. But... God's word works that way with lost people too. When sharing the gospel, we don't need our friends to just understand this. We need them to feel this. Um, I say to people, sin, 
Uh, pe people say sin, yeah, people sin, that's fine. Um, but for a friend to admit that they're a sinner is another thing altogether. To take that on and to own the fact that they have sinned, that's another level. And that's the level we need to try to get our friends to. That's the level I got my buddy to. Um, so you ask them the questions that come from the law, that convict us of sin. Have you ever told a lie? Yeah. Everybody has, right? So what do you call someone who lies? A liar. A liar. Whoa, poor buddy's nerfing real quick, right? Everybody yeah. Now everybody's told a lie. Everybody's a sinner. Uh, ever stole anything? Yes. What do you call someone who steals things? Stealer. A thief, right? <laughs> it's not Pittsburgh, bro. Caleb got it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you call him a thief. So two questions I've asked, two commandments I brought up. Uh, we know our lives can be convicted. The people we're talking to, their lives can be convicted by God's word. Um, how many lies does it take to be called a liar? One. 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 Boom. You're a liar. How many times do you have to steal things to be called a thief? One. 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 How many sins does it take to be called a sinner? <coughs> Just takes one. What does sin earn? Hell. Sinners break God's law and are guilty. I had to tell my buddy, once he admitted he was a sinner, uh, I had to tell him the consequences of the sin he just admitted to me. Then I had to move the conversation into the next hard thing. But it's actually the good news. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus can save. Here's the weird thing. Our culture knows this. People who don't believe it can admit this truth. Oh, Jesus died for the sins of the world on the cross. That's what they'll say. My friend needed to know that his sin problem was real and that Jesus really died for sinners to be saved. And Jesus is enough to solve anyone's sin, sin problem. In fact, Jesus is the only way for sinful men to be made right with God. Only Jesus. He can't be good enough. He can't do enough good things. He can't offset your sins uh, because you've already done sins. You can't do anything to take them away on your own. My buddy, that night, in my red Chevy, uh, Chevy S10, had to know that he was a sinner, um, that his sin problem could be, he could be saved from it. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a substitutionary death on the cross. He was dead for three days, and he beat death. Jesus rose again. When sinners put their trust and their faith in him, something happens. Sinners transfer their sins Jesus on the cross and his perfection is put on the unrighteous sinner this is the good news of the gospel my buddy in my conversation we had gotten to this point am I done no. not quite because it's just truth claims it's just like saying the first president of the United States was George Washington it's 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 truth claims you've got to have a response so I had to take my buddy to the next part of the conversation. Had to make it personal. Individuals must respond. This is the necessity of faith. Faith must be owned. See, my faith couldn't save my friend. He had to put his faith in Jesus to save, so Jesus could save him. He couldn't be saved by my faith. Only Jesus could save him. He had to put down his old ways and old things that he was trusting in. And he had to put his faith in Jesus. We call this repenting and believing the gospel, right? That's what my buddy had to do. And that conversation that I prayed for, for for a while had to happen then. That night he needed to know the last thing. This is, this is important. And we don't want to skip to this. But eternity is forever. The urgency of eternity. we got to get people to own this part in our conversations about the gospel. We don't always live with this urgency. Uh, oftentimes, we take for granted that tomorrow's going to come. We act like this life is going to go on and on and on forever. When the truth is, life is short, eternity is long, and hell is going to be hot. What are the threads of the gospel? We just talked about them. The first thing is... God is good. Second thing is, 
Man is not. Third thing is Jesus can save. Fourth thing is individuals must respond. The fifth thing is eternity is forever. Uh, if we love Jesus, if we love and follow Jesus, we need to live with this urgency. Uh, this is how we share the gospel. So, let's go back to the beginning. How'd we do? Grayson, how'd you do? Uh, with, the, with the sharing of the gospel. The God is good. God is that good. Part, not bad, right? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. All right, um, what about man is simple? Did you get there? Uh, probably not. You got you did okay on that one. Yep, yep. And then you got to Jesus can save. You said that very well. Yep, yep, yep. Did you require a response? No, not quite, but that's okay. That's okay. And what about eternity is forever? Did we get there? Was there any urgency to it? No. So those two steps, they gotta go together. You need to respond, you need to respond now, right? Good, good. All right, Josh. Talk about eternal suffering. I said, I said Jesus was a cool, epic guy. So I, That doesn't exactly say God is good. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. He's the hip new church. Cool, TikTok. epic guy. That's pretty good. I don't good. know. I don't know if he needs to be cool. He's God. <laughs> right, so God is good. Not bad. Not bad. Man is sinful. Did we get there? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. said, hey, yeah. buddy, you're doing it. Jesus can save? Yeah. You got yeah. there? Yep. Yeah. Individual must respond. Did we get Not there? Not really. Not really. Uh, hell is forever, that's how you started. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying you don't say it. I'm saying to, for someone to really listen, you gotta, you got to build to that. you got to earn it in your conversation. Not home you All right, does that make sense? <laughs> what you said wasn't wrong. I do think, I do think you want to build to that. I think about does that make sense? All right, awesome job, good job. Um, we need to live with this sense of urgency at all times, but we don't often do that, do we? Nope. And for that, we have much to confess. Let's stand for a time of confession. I'll read what's in white. You guys read what's in yellow. Lord God, we confess to you and to one another. We have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved us as ourselves. We have not always had the mind of Christ. We have grieved you by wasting your gifts and by wandering from your ways. Forgive us, we pray, and free us from our sins. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Let's sing. All right, we're going to march on. We'll be finishing this book next week. Uh, Jamie will be preaching on the last section of this chapter, finishing out the book. Um, and again, the whole book seems to be answering the question, how can we be rooted in Christ? Um, as we went through the kids, these, these truths are, are pretty solid throughout this book. Um, and so um, that's where we're going. This, this one... Um, this section seems to kind of be pointing to its its action, like last week, but it's but it's action commingled with the gospel. They're together, um, and we, it'll make it'll be clear as we get into it. Um, so let's dive into it. Uh, verse two: um, Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the oh. With that to Thanksgiving, right there. We'll stop there. Uh, this one's kind of a no-brainer. We know we need to pray. Uh, we need to be praying. Uh, most of us would look at our lives and say, I actually need to be praying more. Uh, and this verse tells us how we need to be praying. With devotion, alert, being watchful, and with thanksgiving. Uh, so, leads me to the question is, how do we show devotion? It's a commitment, right? Um, anytime I'm showing devotion, I'm committed to something. And so normally... I pick a time and a place. Um, so if I'm going to be devoted in prayer, I need a consistent time and place so that I can do it well. Um, it talks about being alert. How can I be alert? I need to pay attention, right? I need to be locked in. And so if I'm trying to pray when the lights are out and I'm laying down in my room, probably not going to be paying the most attention. I'm probably going to start a prayer and wake up and say, man, it doesn't work, right? Um, and so... Um, I need to be alert. I need to be paying.
paying attention, right, um, when I pray. And lastly, um, it's a, in Thanksgiving. So how do we show, show thankfulness? We use our words. Um, we say thank you. Um, and so um, when it comes to prayer life, be committed. Have a time and place. Be alert. Don't let your mind wander. This is tough, right? I get it. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got adult onset ADD, right? Uh, I get it. Squirrels, super distracting. Shiny things, yeah, I want to look at those. Um, so I have to use focus techniques, right? Um, I'm going to pay attention when I write things down. So I write things down. Um, so I can keep myself alert during this time. Um, I, I've got, uh, I use prayer books and translate them from old English into modern English. It helps me pay attention. Um, and then in Thanksgiving, I write down what God has done. Um, and then reading my old prayers also helps me with paying attention. Um, so those are how I do it. And how do I cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving? I say thanks over and over. I count those many blessings, count them one by one. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word, so that we may speak forth the mystery of of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned. Um, so this is Paul. Now we get the context of this verse, right? Or this whole book. He's writing this from prison. Um, but he tells us to pray for gospel opportunities. This is tough. In fact, I've been to a lot of prayer meetings, been a lot of prayer gatherings, I've taken lots of prayer requests, and rarely do we get the pray for gospel opportunities. It, it just doesn't, doesn't happen a lot. Um, we, we pray a ton of things. Rarely do we pray for opportunities to share the gospel. Um, as this verse says, that God would open a door for the word that we may speak forth the mysteries of Christ. I don't do this very well. Um, I need to do it more often. Um, I'm pretty good at opening with thank you. Um, I'm pretty good about asking um, for him to grow his church. I need to get better about saying and give us opportunities to share your gospel. Uh, I'm not saying we, we neglect those other things we're good at in prayer. Uh, we, we just need to get good at, at adding this. Um, according to this chapter, we're commanded uh, to pray for opportunities to share the gospel. Um, so we need to be praying for that. Verse 4, share a clear gospel. Um, that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. Um, pray that I proclaim it clearly as I should, some versions of the Bible say. Um, we need to proclaim him, as, as Paul said in chapter 1, verse 28. Proclaim Christ. Um, here's, here's the goal as a church. We've said this before. We bring it back every year. We want every person in Tahoka to have an opportunity to hear and respond to the gospel. I believe every person in Tahoka can say that they've had Crosswork Church knock on their door. We have knocked on just about every door in the going on five years we've been around. Or five years, over five years, yeah. Um, and so I believe we've knocked on every door in town, right? Um, I believe every home that was there, every person that was in their home, when we knocked on their door can say Crosswork Church, Church offered to pray for them. We did that. We can honestly say we've offered to pray for every home in Tahoka. That's not the same as a church that shared the gospel with every home in Tahoka. And, and when we share the gospel, we want to share a good, a good and clear gospel. We define that clear gospel with the kids, right? God is good, man is not. Jesus is perfect, and his sacrificial death can save sinners. Have you responded to the gospel in faith, real, tangible faith? Hell is hot, eternity is forever, you, so don't wait. We want to share a clear gospel with every person in our town. That's our goal. Verse 5. Make the most of these gospel opportunities. Conduct yourselves with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. We want to be wise with outsiders, as some translation says. Be, be wise, just so you know. It doesn't mean to know tons and tons of stuff. We don't need tons and tons of knowledge. We need to act on the things we already know. So I, I don't have to go to this and have all the ins and outs of God's word figured out. But I can, I can share the five threads of the gospel pretty clearly. 
I know those things, and I know I ought to do those things. And so we have tons of books. In fact, we have tons of books of knowledge ourselves. Some of y'all have been in church since, like, right after the doctor spanked you, right? I mean, you were, you were in church. I think Josh and Caleb, they had two Sundays off because they were, you know, still on hospital air, right? But other than that, these kiddos have been in church since then. A lot of y'all grew up in church. The knowledge we have is vast. Jamie and Trevor and I were talking about this. When we go to Africa, Jamie's like, what do we need to teach them? Where do we start? The basics. We're talking, we're talking baby level things. We want to help them eat and drink and walk. <laughs> and so we don't need the backflips of the, of the gospel or of the Bible. We need the simple, simple things. Um, and we, we know more. <laughs> We've been raised in this in this Christian culture, in the church, and we need to act on the things we know. That's making the most of gospel opportunities. Uh, we need to make the most of these opportunities. Um, I want to get to the end of the year, 2023, and say, honestly, Lord, I didn't miss one. Maybe I didn't do everything I could have, but, but I didn't miss one gospel opportunity you put in front of me. I at least swung as hard as I could. Maybe I missed, maybe I fouled, maybe the ball went this way or that, but I swung. Um, so every time there's a gospel opportunity, every time the doors open for the gospel, we as Crossroads Church, we walk through. That's what we want to be able to, make, to say we, we make the, best, the most of these gospel opportunities. Um, my friend, <laughs> he told me this story years ago, I'm bringing it back. Um, he, was, uh, he liked to work out weird hours, late at night, um, and uh, he, he uh, worked out at 24-Hour Fitness, and he said he, he said goodbye to the security guard or whatever and, and had a seat, or sat in his car. He's in his truck, and, and he just really feels God impress on him. You need to go share the gospel with that security guard. And he's, he, he, he says, he's, he told me, man, I just argued with God for a while. I just said, I, I don't want to go. It's late at night. It's 1.30 in the morning. He's going to think I'm weird. Um, and, and still just kind of kept feeling like like Holy Spirit was saying, no, just go, just go, just go. And finally, out loud, in his car, he's holding the steering wheel, and he says, fine, I'm going, God, but you're coming with me. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what we need. That's making the most of these gospel opportunities, whether we feel good or equipped or ready to, ready, we need to say, no, 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 I'm going, Lord, and you're coming with me. Let's go. All right. Verse 6, and we're done. Uh, Let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Um, a lot of people take this to mean be gracious and kind in your conversation. And that's that's part of it. Yeah, that, that works. Um, but we're, we can't forget the context. We're actually talking about God's grace. His grace is we are sinners. We earned hell, and he took the punishment for us. So we need to season that into our conversations. Uh, Filling our conversations with the grace of God, with his salt, right? That flavor that he gives. Um, And and, uh, and that that seasoned with salt, salt is flavor, right? Uh, So we need to be people who who have conversations with people that people like talking to, right? Um, and then it says to go on, it says, know how to answer everyone. This doesn't mean know all the answers to everything. This is know how to answer everyone. Um, it has something to do with knowledge. Um, here's the thing, we'll never have all the answers. But we should pursue knowing God better. But knowing how to answer everyone is talking about knowing people. Right, um, so so this kind of person is a talker. How do I answer the talker when they had this question? This kind of person's a thinker. How do I answer the thinker? This kind of person, they have no shame in their life. So how do I answer the shameless person? This one, they know they, they they're doing wrong. But they have no urgency. So how do I answer this person? This guy. He, this kind of person, they know all the right words to say. They can, they can talk the Christian talk, but they live a life 
that denies the beliefs of this book. So how do I answer this kind of faker, right? Know how to answer these kinds of people. We don't need to know everything. We know, need to know how to answer people. Um, so I believe the theme of this text, the author wants us to know the gospel. Mentally share what is required to actually call uh, something a gospel conversation. I once had a Sunday school teacher uh, who said uh, that they counted being nice as sharing the gospel. They said it was a way of sharing the gospel because people could see their nice actions and the love of God would shine through. That's cute, right? Uh, but not necessarily true. Here's how I know. Because if you're nice to someone and they die, they still go to hell. They still pay for their own sins in eternity because they didn't hear that they were sinners and that Jesus can save and they needed to respond. There is this concept of minimum reducibility. This means you can only reduce an object down so far before it quits being that object altogether, right? Um, so to keep it simple, um, to break something down any further than this, it will do damage to what it is. So a sandwich can be broken down to a piece of bread and meat, right? But if you take away one of those two things, it quits being a sandwich. It's either a piece of bread or a piece of meat. It's no longer a sandwich. Can you do more? Yeah, you can add another piece of bread on top. Or you can just fold that together. You can put mayonnaise, much. You can add all these flavorful things to make that sandwich more appealing. But if you break it down further than any further than a piece of bread and meat, you're missing things. The gospel is the same way. We need to know the threads of the gospel so that we can share it and not miss the vital parts. This can be done in just a few sentences as we saw during kids' time, but if you break it down any further, it's no longer what we set out to share. We need to share the character of God. God is good. Man is sinful. Jesus can save sinners. You must respond in faith, and eternity is forever, so act now. Know the gospel. Next, we need to, uh, what the author wants us to do, I did my best to make alliteration. Pray, prepare, and plunge. All right, pray, prepare, and take the plunge. Um, this is the best I come up with, all right? So pray. Pray with the advance of the gospel in mind. Ask God to advance the gospel through Crosswork Church and through you as a believer. Ask him to show you missed opportunities, grieve over those missed opportunities, and, and try not to miss the next one. Ask him to give you more opportunities. Pray. Ask God to advance the gospel through you. Prepare. Uh, this means you may need to rehearse the gospel. Know what the threads of the gospel are and be ready for action with the gospel in mind. Like a runner waiting for the starting gun. Be ready. It's amazing how many times you will hear God say, get ready. When you're living with the gospel ready to go. Um, be prepared. And then finally, take the plunge. Just do it. Don't wait for the perfect scenario or situation to share Jesus. Share Jesus even if you share him wrong. Right? Um, the stars may never align in ways you want them to. You may forget something that could be vital. Take the plunge anyways. Share the gospel. You may forget one of those threads. Here's the truth. They're no worse off for not hearing a complete gospel. They were going to hell before you shared a partial gospel. They're still going to hell after you shared a partial gospel. They're not any worse off for you have trying. And you know what? You are better off for having tried. Take the plunge. Dive in. Share Jesus best you can. And then come back and, and think about how you could do it better and do it better the next time. Share Jesus with your friends and your neighbors and your family and your co-workers and your classmates and your teammates. We need to prepare. We need to come pray, prepare, and take the plunge and share the gospel. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Help us to love and follow you. Help us to pray the gospel, to prepare, to share the gospel, and to take that plunge. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand.